Hello everyone, today we're looking at the new Repel Raid on Orison missions in Star Citizen, how to gain access to them, and what we've learned leveling them up to tier 5 on the PTU and live servers over 3 months. The new missions are hosted in the Atmosphere of Crusader, just outside of Orison, and can be found on the newly crafted platform Selenki, Brushwood, Hartmore, and the Admin Center that were added in 3.17. These were originally part of the Siege of Orison dynamic event, which had the community clearing out the Ninetales gang and their lieutenants from all four platforms. CIG has run the event several times so far, but of course when it's not active, the location becomes somewhat of a ghost town. CIG is also using the platforms to breathe new life into the available missions around Crusader in 3.18 and giving FPS fans a much needed change of scenery. Compared to the claustrophobic bunkers we're all accustomed to, the Orison platforms have much more architectural variety and plenty of outdoor green space. While it is possible to fly a ship or take the public transport shuttle to these locations, you will be trespassing without an active invitation and encroachment by air will quickly have the local defenses making a few hull adjustments for you free of charge. So how do we get these new missions and gain access then? The Repel Raid on Orison missions level with the same Crusader security reputation gained by doing missions on Crusader's three moons, Yella, Selen, and Damar. Unlocking the Orison mission line requires that we complete the Crusader security work assessment, which can be picked up as a general mercenary mission while in the vicinity of Crusader. The intro mission will send you to an occupied security bunker where you must assist Crusader security in defeating the Ninetales members within. Be careful not to fail this first mission though, as you'll take a negative reputation hit and be ineligible to try your luck again right away. If you do fail, you can either have someone share the assessment mission with you in a party or wait until they forgive you and offer the mission again. Once completed, you should now be at level 1 reputation with Crusader security and be ready to head to the new bunkers in the sky. Go to the general mercenary section of the contracts manager and look for a new mission called Repel Raid on Orison. Accepting this mission will add a waypoint marker to a building on one of the four platforms in Crusader's atmosphere. Head down to Orison and then manually fly over to the mission waypoint now that you're safely cleared for entry. The atmosphere is thick on Crusader, so I would recommend a ship with decent atmo speed and a small footprint as landing will be tight at times. The Anvil Pisces C8 R worked well for this task and the supplies in Tier 3 Med Bed came in handy on more than one occasion. Once you enter the marker area, the mission text will update and display the number of NPCs remaining, and you can now begin your search and root out the Ninetail members currently occupying the property. Once the pirates are dealt with, you will be paid for your trouble and as an additional thank you, given 15 minutes to loot and clear out before you're considered trespassing again. As you complete more Crusader security ground missions and move up in reputation, the missions will increase in difficulty by adding multiple locations. The Repel Raid on Orison mission involves a single building and requires you to deal with 15 Ninetale NPCs. At level 2 reputation, you'll receive the Repel Multiple Raids on Orison mission, which increases the mission footprint by adding a second location. At level 3, the mission name changes to Ninetales Enforcer Bounty in the Contracts Manager, and at level 4 and 5, Ninetales Enforcer Bounties. Additional Enforcer bosses and their bodyguards are added as a secondary spawn wave. The Enforcers are in typical Ninetales heavy armor, have larger health pools, and cannot be taken down by a melee middle mouse button tactic. Unfortunately, the Enforcers are not the same as the Lieutenants we saw in the Siege event. They currently have no special weapons or armor, and definitely no codes to open up the large orange shipping containers around the platforms, but we can still certainly try. You can still loot the NPCs you kill, and there are plenty of FS9s, P4s, and C54s to go around. You'll also find a number of green loot crates in the area that contain weapons and ammunition, as well as some red loot crates which generally contain consumables. After running these missions for a few months with friends, there are a few things we learned the hard way that eventually made Orison mission life much easier. Learning how to approach the different building layouts we encountered was a large part of that. There are definitely times when NPCs can come out of the woodwork and catch you off guard in these missions, especially when the server tick rates are in the double digits. Some buildings have multiple levels and outdoor locations that the NPCs can spawn into, making flanks and unexpected surprises very possible. There are also areas with very little landing room, making it difficult to exit the ship at a safe distance without NPCs immediately engaging you during an exit animation. The most common threat consists of an upper landing level containing either a gym, office, or restaurant structure with an elevator leading down to what is probably the most well-guarded juice bar you'll ever see. So what did we learn? 
First and foremost, use your ship as a weapon. A large part of the missions are NPCs roaming outside of the buildings and landing pads. Make use of your ship's weaponry and light them up from the sky and thin out the ranks before heading inside. Decreasing your weapon convergence in the game settings can also help make hitting them easier. Sometimes just opening up the back door of the CDR and sniping them with a trusty P6 is fun to mix things up too. Avoid fighting out of elevators where possible. Most elevator exits are choke points that open up into a room with numerous NPCs that can quickly overwhelm you from multiple angles and distances. As of this writing, it is also impossible to damage NPCs from within the elevator, making stepping out in a Rambo-esque approach mandatory as the doors close behind you. Instead, use your ship to taxi to each level you need to clear out. Once you've finished clearing the top of a building, consider parking your ship below and engaging the NPCs guarding the juice bar elevator from further out through the large entrance in the building. Try and reduce the amount of noise you make. Noise will draw NPCs to you and if the server tick rates are behaving, NPCs will become quite aggressive and hyper accurate. Use a scope and suppressor on a secondary weapon like a P6 or AO3 sniper or even your favorite mid-range rifle. This will help you pick off NPCs quietly without spooking the whole platform. Some of the missions have NPCs in large outdoor areas, and they tend to wander a bit. Instead of searching for that final NPC on foot, use your ship's scanner ping while 50 meters from the ground, and you will pick up any NPCs, players, or even corpses. Avoid friendly fire even against party members. The turrets around the platforms are on high alert, and any friendly fire at all will result in your ship being blown up. Don't ask me how I know in the comments below. Keep your health topped up. If you should happen to get injured in the heat of combat, you can make use of the tier 3 medical bed located in the gym on most platforms to heal minor injuries or just to get hydrated between missions. You can easily spot the building from your ship by looking for the building with the red interior and boxing ring. Overall, I think the new missions are really cool and we had a lot of fun with them over the last few months. The scenery on the platforms is really refreshing compared to the straight bunker diving day in and day out, and it's good that CIG are reusing event assets for other purposes. If you're looking to maximize your time though, the standard bunkers still seem to be faster at making money and reputation. The loot in the traditional bunkers also seems a bit better so far in 3.18 Live. Even so, adding in the repel missions to mix things up from time to time can help keep things interesting, and I feel they're also more appropriate with friends as you're not all cramped in one spot and can spread out to tackle different areas of the mission separately. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the new Orson missions in 3.18, and consider subscribing to the channel if this guide has helped you in any way. Please let us know in the comments below what you think about these new missions when you get a chance to try them. Thanks for watching.